Hello, I'm Michael Finn, holistic exercise and lifestyle coach, and this is going to be part two of my totem pole of health and performance video. All right, quick little recap. So, yep, I'm a holistic exercise lifestyle coach. You can learn more about me on my website, finfit.com, all that kind of good stuff. If you like all this, make sure to subscribe and learn more. Today, we're going to continue. I will put the link to this, uh, to part one, in the description down below. So make sure to check out part one before you start to part two, because you might get a little confused. Um, we went over the learning points of um, all things in life can be stressful, why we need to manage stress, and then the hierarchy of um, human body systems and what order they're kind of go in. We in part one, and we talked about stresses and these green arrows and the red arrows going into the body and how we need to have the appropriate amounts of different things so that everything can function correctly. And then we went on to the top of the totem pole where we talked about this bird up here at the top being the psyche and the mindset. The shadow parts underneath the wings as being the shadow or the, un the parts of us that we don't really like that we would like to change, but sometimes people don't take the energy or the time to do that. And then we talked about balance, which is the sun up here above the bird and the moon underneath the left wing of the bird. And that we need to maintain balance in our life, the hot, the cold, the work, the rest, the play, the rest, the female, the male, the wet, the dry, the anabolic, catabolic. We went through all of that and balanced with the stresses here as we see to the left of the totem pole. And then we moved on into the next part down, which is breathing. And so we have that skull there with the breathing in and out of the nose, all very important. The posture is important. Posture affects breathing. Breathing affects posture. The whole works. Sitting at computers with poor posture is really bad. All that kind of good stuff, including oxygen is the primary source of energy, metabolism, digestion, all that kind of good stuff. And then we got down into below that, which is mastication and nutrition. So jaw alignment, teeth is healthy, um, that, you know, the nutrition of bringing really good high quality food in, which is why I've got the pictures down there of the meats, the vegetables, the fruits, and all that kind of good stuff. And hydration is really important too. And then the rule of thirds, I talked about all that. So now we're going to move on. That was a quick little recap. And so the next level down below is um, below this skull of eating is this big eye. And that eye represents vision, all right? So I am legally blind. And so in all reality, because if you have a disability, if you have a severe disability um, in one of these areas, it can push the, um, it can, it can kind of change the levels of the totem pole. So the fact that I have a severe vision disability it actually can um, put my vision above other things, including breathing. My body will hold um, my skull in a different position to allow me to see better, but it does not disrupt my breathing or anything like that because vision is very important for survival and doing the things that you need to do. So, um, and I'll cover this a little bit more as I go along. So, Vision helps us with proprioceptiveness. It allows us to see the horizon, which allows us to stay on balance and, um, and not fall over, which is why I have this nice gymnast walking on a balance beam. So vision is also important for hunting because throughout our uh, lives or basically throughout uh, the life of humans on this planet, we've had to hunt for our food and capture our food. And if you can't see your food, well, then you're not going to do a very good job of catching it. So if you follow evolution, you know, we started off as little worms that just had sensors. They didn't, we didn't even have eyes. So, um, and we just had to swim around in liquid and try to find things and luckily we finally would and you know but eventually we evolved eyes and then more complex eyes and that sort of thing too so then another big aspect of vision that's very important is light which is why um i have this picture down here at the bottom of 
someone sitting on the beach in the sun. So because all full spectrum lighting is very important, we get the majority of our vitamin D through our eyes. We get it through our skin too, but we get a lot of it through our eyes. We can actually get quite a bit of vitamin D sitting in the shade with a hat on, but looking out into the sunlight as long as there's not some artificial glass or something like that disrupting or, or tweaking the um, light as it comes into us. Vision is also very important because a lot of people are visual learners. So that we need to make sure that they're learning in the way that works best for them and actually watching and seeing things. And then vision is also important for avoiding danger, whether it's wild animals or a car flying down the street back about ready to run over you or anything along those lines. So vision is highly important. Um, it's why you need to get your eyes checked regularly to make sure that they are fairly balanced. You don't want to have more than, say, 20 or, sorry, 10 or 20 degrees of acuity difference from one eye to the other because it will throw off the whole rest of your body down below. So, get corrected lenses to balance that out. So, you know, if you're 2020 in one eye and 2030 in the other eye, it's not a problem. But if you're somebody like me, now I'm, mine's really damaged, but I'm 2,650 in one eye and I'm 21,000 in the other eye. So there's a huge difference there, um, but they're both pretty poor. Uh, and I have friends that don't have any vision in one eye and maybe have vision in the other eye, but it's out the side of the eye. And so for them to actually see forward, they have to actually have their head turned to the side. And because of that, their whole spine is twisted. And so when I'm working with them physically and trying to teach them how to do things or how to stretch or how to do you know things particularly, I always have to remember that this vision thing is way up here in the totem pole and I cannot try to be focusing my attention on trying to straighten out that twist in their spine because it's never going to go away. And I'll talk a bit, but that's a little bit more two levels down with myself um, and explain this a little bit better. But the big key is, is that vision, the body's always going to be focusing on the vision first. So if someone's vision is out of balance, I'm going to have a hard time aligning other things down below. And so I have to be aware of, is someone's vision important? Which is why I always ask, you know, how is your vision? Do you wear corrective lenses? Do you wear contacts? Do you get your eyes checked regularly? All those kind of good things. It's all in my initial client paperwork. All right. So that's vision high up there on the totem pole. Next down below that, we have the vestibular system and hearing. So... So below the eye on the totem pole, we have this ear over here on the right. And then this section over here on the left of that is supposed to represent the vestibular system. So our vestibular system is primarily developed when we are a baby. It allows us to tell what's up and what's down and whether our body is falling this way or that way. And so it works like if our eyes are closed. So I have like I do a lot of exercises with people on um, a Swiss ball, like this guy up here in the left corner doing push-ups. Um, but then again, we have the girl on the balance beam, same kind of thing. We have surfing. We have on the snow or ice. We have just even walking in the sand on the beach. All these things require a certain level of vestibular function and maintaining balance. And so we need to work the vestibular system, which is exactly why I use things like Swiss balls and balance boards and all sorts of stuff so that we exercise the vestibular system because you can see how high it is above in the totem pole. So it's higher than we haven't even got to any kind of physical structure in the body yet. So other than breathing and mastication. So it's high up in the system. And that vestibular system helps us, like I said, know what's up and down, including if you are flying in the air, it helps you know what's up and down. Or even if you're underwater um, and you are sensitive enough, it helps you there as well. 
And then hearing is a similar kind of thing to vision. We need to hear so that we can hear what we need to hear and or hear danger. Um, and in that aspect, um, I have clients that only have hearing in one ear and the same thing, they have twists in their spine and there's no way I'm going to eliminate those twists. I just have to be aware of them and know why they're there and make sure that I'm not contributing to them, but I'm making their body strong in the aspect to where their body can move in and out of that twist when needed. That's what's really, really important. All right. So let's see hearing. So then back to the vestibular system a little bit, we have tilting reflexes and we have writing reflexes. So I always try to get this, I, I always tend to do this backwards. So tilting reflexes is when we are on something moving like this surfboard, it's moving underneath us in the water and um, and or the sand sometimes can be moving under our feet when we're walking on really dry sand or when we're doing push-ups and our feet are up on the ball and our hands are on the ground and the ball is moving underneath us. That's more of a tilting reflex where things are moving, kind of like when you step onto a moving sidewalk at the airport and your body kind of goes, whoa, what's going on? Or you step off of it at the other end and your like, body goes once again, whoa, what's going on? So riding reflexes is just being up there on top of the balance beam and riding yourself up on top of that balance beam and, and staying up there. So, and all of these vestibular systems, like I said, are developed very young. My son has a very good friend who is actually has a hearing problem. Um, and he does wear some hearing aids to help him hear really well, but because he's had that hearing problem his whole life, his vestibular system was greatly developed when he was a baby before they realized and, and could really deal with um, improving his hearing. And so his balance is crazy insane. He does stuff that, you know, without any coaching or training or anything, he's on a hoverboard and he does it like he just like was born on it. Um, he comes over to my studio and he'll like kneel on top of a Swiss ball and bounce on it while he's kneeling and basically roll it over the top of round foam rollers while he's kneeling on top of the ball itself. It's insane what this kid can do. It's totally crazy. And I've seen, you know, lots of other people do amazing things like standing on top of one Swiss ball, jumping, doing a 360 in the air and landing on top of another Swiss ball. That is all vestibular system. So, and you know, mine's fairly developed, but mine's more developed with movement. So from running on the grass with a blindfold on playing beat baseball. All right. So that's vestibular and hearing once again, above a lot of other stuff. So we got to be aware of it. All right. So next up in the totem pole is now we get up into the upper cervical spine or what is referred to as the atlas, which is the very top vertebra just below your skull. And so that's why I've got the picture here of the skull and over in the totem pole, you kind of have that little upper cervical looking section just below the ear and the vestibular section. Um, and through here, I also have the pictures of um, the muscles and the nerves and the blood flow that also pass all through this area. Okay, so that atlas is basically controlling over the rest of your spine and all of your nerves run out of your brain, down through the brain stem and through your neck. So if your neck is jacked up because of your posture or because you're not breathing correctly and so your body's adjusting your posture, trying to get more air or you're not eating correctly or your jaw is out of alignment or anything else, your nervous system will not be performing at its ideal amount and it's going to struggle. So once again, if someone comes to me with nerve problems, the first place I'm going to look is not the nerves. I'm going to look at the top of the totem pole. How's our psyche doing? How's our breathing pattern doing? How are we eating? How's our vision? How's our hearing? How's our vestibular? And then I'm going to get into here. 
How is our upper cervical spine? What kind of condition is it in? Can it function correctly? Do we have normal lateral and flexion, forward flexion, extension, rotation? And is it in alignment? Do I need to send them to a special chiropractor that deals with aligning the atlas? All this other kind of great stuff. So that's got to be put in place. Now, real quickly, just for those of you that have vision impairments and or hearing impairments or issues with your vestibular system, my atlas is out of alignment. It's about four degrees twisted to the left. And that is because of my vision. It allows me to put my skull in the best place for, um, for vision, both being able to see things and to be getting myself out of danger when needed. So I have gone and had adjustments and all this other kind of thing, trying to put that back in place. But when I do that, I don't feel good simply off of the fact that I can't perform as well as I can with it actually out of alignment. And that's because my vision trumps my atlas. Okay. So, and we have to be aware of that all the time, that that vision is going to trump the atlas. So, and I have to pay attention to that with my clients. If it's something that's not correctable like mine, we need to be aware. Same thing goes with the hearing. So, but for most people, um, we need to check. And I do lots of little assessments to make sure that that atlas is in the right spot. And I feel it when I'm doing tissue work and things along those lines too. All right. So nervous system, blood flow. So blood flow is very important through the neck because that's how your brain gets blood and that's how it gets oxygen. So if your upper cervical spine is all out of alignment and all jacked up or compressed or you got forward head posture all the time, you are restricting blood flow to your brain. Not a good thing. And that's going to disrupt. Now, this is where it goes the opposite direction. Now, that's going to disrupt psyche because you're not going to be able to think clearly because you're not going to be able to create the nutrients and the information properly and have all of um, the brain chemicals translated through there so that you can think properly. So it will be harder to think positive. It will be harder to come up with new ideas. It will be hard to balance even the left-hand side of the brain and the right-hand side of the brain. So very important that we have this upper cervical part of the body squared away. And then stabilizing the skull. We need to make sure that the muscles are strong enough and balanced and uh, functioning correctly to stabilize the skull. When we walk, jog, run, move, everything else, the body needs to keep the eyes and the nose and the teeth and the jaw all squared and on the horizon so that they don't wear out. Remember, all these things are above so that we can breathe, so that we can see. All these things are above that in the totem pole. So um, it's very important. And so it will adjust things to try to counter that. But if the muscles get out of whack because of other things that we're doing, because we're sitting with poor posture at the computer for a long period of time, it's going to change everything in this stabilizing the skull aspect of things. This is why people get headaches when they run or they just say, I can't run because it hurts. Um, most of the time, it's because there's an imbalance and or weakness in the upper cervical spine. All right, so that's enough on upper cervical. So down below that, now we get into organs and glands. So down here on the totem pole, underneath the upper cervical system, you see all the little organs here. We got that, which is kind of like a heart over here on the left and a liver and some intestines. So we don't have too much there, but there's more down below too. So, but that is our representing our organs or our viscera. So all of them, not just the liver and the heart, but our lungs, our liver, our heart, our kidney, our pancreas, everything. So we need to be aware that if those are unhappy, that other things down or above the chain can also be happy. Okay. 
So you cannot live without your organs. I have that here on the side. And that is why we have to be paying attention to them. So um, let's see. So I've got pictures up here at the top of our heart and our lungs and how all those work and the whole digestive system. And so they all sit in the torso. The other big aspect is um, our organs reflects the pain into our muscular skeletal system. So here just left of the totem pole at the bottom, I have a little chart from reflexology. So if your organs had pain or could sense pain in them, every time they were under stress, you wouldn't be able to get anything done. So, or every time they were be, you know, working hard or something like that. So this is why when someone has a heart attack, they'll get pain in the chest. So, but it's in the chest, it's in the muscles in the left front side of the chest. And it will sometimes go up into the neck and in the jaw on the left side and down the left arm and things like that. So, because that's the same nerve pathway that the heart is attached to. So, and I go into deeper detail on this and other videos on my channel. So look for nerves and how the nerves and organs connect together. But so they refer that pain out to the musculoskeletal system. So when people come to me and they complain about pain in particular areas of their body, I correlate that with other things that are going on so that I can tell on, do we need to make sure that we take care of a particular organ? Is their liver stressed out? Is their pancreas stressed out? Is their digestive system stretched, stet, ha, stressed out? So that that way we can take care of the organ and make it healthier. And that way we can make the overall total body healthier and fix it, so to speak. So, uh, are, oh, so, and then the other aspect is, thankfully, the way that mother nature put us together, so the organs can send all those signals out to our musculoskeletal system, and there's a super highway to dissipate that out. So that's why it will go out there. You'll even see this to where people will atrophy so I've had people that have had liver problems for a long time. And if you see on this diagram here on the back right hand side, just right underneath the right shoulder blade, um, that's where the liver refers to or one of the many spots. And they will be completely atrophied in this spot because the body will pull all the nutrition from that muscle to support the liver. And so that's the other thing that I'll be looking at is where is somebody's muscles atrophy and are they atrophying because they're not using them or are they atrophying because the organ is sucking all of the nutrition out of that muscle so that it can use it. So, but there is very little flow of pain from the musculoskeletal system into the organs. It can happen, but it's more like a little single tack track cow trail kind of heading in towards the organs. Otherwise, every time you landed on your left elbow, you'd have a heart attack. So that wouldn't be good. So we need to make sure that we're paying attention to how important these organs are. All right. All right. Next, this one's the crazy one. This is emotions. And so if we go over here to our totem pole down below the whole organs and the viscera, we have this little frowny face looking kind of character. And then we actually have a couple other little organs sitting underneath the frowny face character. And I'll get into that in a second. And, um, and some of the reason why there's the little organs down below him is that's because our emotions can actually float up and down the totem pole, depending upon how strong they are and what is going on. And I will get into that, okay? And so um, I had fun with this one. This is why I put the picture of um, the in and out Disney movie with all of the different characters. It's all about like emotions and how they affect us and stuff like that. Great little fun little movie. Um, and so you got, you know, a little sadness over here and you got joy and you got, I think that's anger over there, the little red guy. Um, but they represent 
all the different emotions and all those different emotions go to different places in our body and they can build up in different places in our body. So like the liver is the home of anger. And so sometimes people that are very angry and get angered easily, um, they have liver issues. And so we also need to be aware of that when we are dealing with things. So, or thinking about ourselves, it's like, you know, if I'm getting angry real regularly, it's like, hmm, well, how's my liver doing? Am I taking care of it? Or am I putting a bunch of crappy food in my body and, and causing a lot of stress on my liver because it's having to detoxify junk? So got to be aware of that. Um, so if we have a broken heart, if we break up in a relationship, it will drive this emotional system up. It ends up affecting our psyche. It affects the balance in our life. It affects our breathing patterns. It affects the way we eat. Some people will eat more. Some people will eat less. Um, it will affect our vision um, and our vestibular and our hearing systems, but not quite as much. Um, but and it will definitely affect our organs. People that have experienced this, you know, you'll feel pain in the chest and your gut and everything else. And you know, and it's part of life, and it's something we need to get through. It's kind of that red arrow of stress, which means we need to take the time to, you know, rest and recover and get through it and things will get better and we'll get over it and then we'll start another relationship and, you know, hopefully better than the one that we just got out of. Um, all right. So then um, gut feelings, you know, sometimes you will just have a feeling that, oh, there's a bad situation coming or something like that. And maybe I need to, you know, get out of here. And, you know, this, this doesn't quite feel right. Um, I don't want to stay in it. So same kind of thing that will change the way your whole body functions, um, both positively and negatively. So, cause sometimes we have good gut feelings, right? It's like, you know, what does your gut say? It's gut says, Hey, let's go for it. This is going to be fun. So there's that. And then we also have the pain in the butt. And that's why I put Mr. Burns from The Simpsons. I'm not a huge Simpsons fan, but I've seen a couple episodes. So because he's like supposed to be the grumpy pain in the butt boss and things like that. And so if we have something in our life that is a constant like pain in the butt, whether it's a boss or a relationship, like I talked about in, uh, you know, is it time to, you know, kick the boyfriend out of the house or something like that because they're, you know, not doing what they're supposed to be doing, what's going on, that will disrupt and cause that emotion to rise up and disrupt higher things in our totem pole. And so, and as well as also disrupt things lower in the totem pole. So we have to be aware of, are we dealing with all of our emotions correctly. Great to have emotions, great to express emotions, but we need to know why we're having them and are we dealing with them correctly and having balance. That's why work and play is very important, but also rest is very important and, and you know, love and everything else and focusing on all that. So that's why I have all these great characters from the Inside Out movie, very fun. And, you know, Mr. Burns and all the other kind of good stuff. And then all these crazy emojis that everybody sends in their texts and everything else. Okay. So cool. That's emotions. So now we are going to get down into some physical stuff again. So we now have the pelvis and the lower lumbar spine. So most common thing that people complain of is low back pain, right? Well, maybe not everybody knows that, but it's really super common. I'm sure you've heard people complain about their low back. Well, guess what? Low back is way down here in the totem pole. So we've already gone through the psyche and the balance and the breathing and the mastication and the nutrition and the vision and the vestibular system and the hearing system and the upper cervical spine and the organs and the viscera and the emotions. And now we're finally getting down to actually something physical again, where we go with the pelvis and the lumbar spine. So if somebody comes to me with, lum with low back pain, yes, I will start working in the physical, 
But while I'm doing that, I'm going to be asking about everything else higher up in the totem pole and making sure that that's on track. And this is once again, exactly why I've created my holistic lifestyle mastery program. So, um, so this also includes um, the sacrum, SI joint, uh, any kind of SI joint dysfunction, things along those lines. And one other important thing to note is that the cervical spine will mimic the lumbar spine and vice versa. So lots of studies have been done to show that if people had dysfunction or even an injury in either the cervical spine or the lumbar spine, one or the other, in about five to seven years after that injury occurs, people will start having a similar problem in the other because the body will start mimicking it because you've got a spinal cord running between that cervical spine and the lumbar spine. And it can't be twisted or torqued too much. So, you know, it's flexible to a certain degree, but not overly flexible. So it has to account for things. So when your cervical spine rotates, your lumbar spine rotates the same way, just in reverse. Um, and I get into more of that in some of my talks about um, rotation and stability in the lumbar spine and fun things along those lines. So we have to be aware of that. So once again, if there's problems in the cervical spine, I need to be paying attention because I can't fix things in the lumbar spine if the lumbar spine is just mimicking something up in the cervical spine. All righty. And then good old um, nerve flow and blood flow again. So all of your nerves come out of your spine and go through your hips and down your legs. And so if you have compression in your lumbar spine, well, then you could have weak areas in your lower body or uh, a lack of nerve flow or a slightly numb toe or part of a leg or atrophying muscles because it's not getting enough nerve flow and or even blood flow. So, and this can also kind of go along with lymph flow as well. So, um, so very important that we're paying attention to that, that there's going to be a dramatic effect of all of that. And then when it also, when we come back to the whole balance thing and stability part, um, I'll, this is, you know, referred to as the core, so to speak, by a lot of people, even though the whole body is kind of the core in my book. Um, when we are generating force with our upper body and our feet are on the ground, we have to generate that force by pushing our feet into the ground and having that force come up through our pelvis and our lumbar spine. So then we can then transfer that force up our spine and into our upper body. So if you're having any kind of issues doing things with your upper body, we need to make sure that the lower body is functioning correctly so that we can actually generate force through the lower body so that we can move our upper body. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So, and then once again, um, I've got the whole picture up here at the top of all the muscles uh, on the pelvis itself and around the lumbar spine. These all need to be balanced. There's lots of them. There's like 29 different muscles that cross over the whole uh, lumbopelvic girdle and that sort of thing. So they all need to be functioning, working, balanced one side to the other um, so that we have good balance and structure. And then down here at the bottom, I put these two people sitting on the Swiss balls because once again, very, very important to be challenging the vestibular system and having people learn how to actually control and move their pelvis to get proper function in our pelvis. Uh, one little aspect of this to show how important it is, our SI joint only moves about four millimeters. And so many people complain about having SI joint pain and all this other kind of thing, but it really only moves about four millimeters. So, but if you lose one millimeter of motion, that's 25% of your range of motion. 
And if you lose two millimeters, well, that's 50%. So it's just huge. Whereas the shoulder joint, the most mobile joint of the body has 1600 degrees of range of motion in it. So if you lose 10, well, you know, you still got 1590. So it's not nearly a big of a deficit as that SI joint is. So very, very important. All right. And then now we get down to the bottom of the totem pole and the bottom of the totem pole is these are what we refer to as the slave joints and the slave muscles. All right. And this is why I put the little diagram next to. So um, at the bottom of our totem pole here for slave joints, we've got the little caveman kind of lurking, working kind of guy with the shoulders and the arms. So all of our slave joints are our shoulders, arms, the whole kind of middle part of our spine or the thoracic spine and our hips and our legs and our knees and our lower legs and our feet. Okay. Now I would actually put the feet at the top of that list um, up there with the shoulders because they're really, really important, but that isn't how the totem pole works. So, and that's why I did this crazy thing with the pictures on this slide. So I've got this great, you know, muscular guy on here, but I chopped off his midsection because that's higher up on the totem pole. Um, and so you can just see like just the two upper segments of his rectus abdominis and his chest and his shoulders and his arms. And then I put the diagrams of uh, the legs down below both the front and the side and all the muscles that are there. And then I put a soccer ball over his head and his neck and his cervical spine. So all of these muscles, which are most of the time, the muscles that people come to me that they want looking better, they're all the way down here at the bottom of the totem pole. If you really want all of this part of your body looking really great and functioning really great and feeling really great, we need to first be paying attention to everything up here in the top part of the totem pole. And when we do that, this part here will just follow suit and will be easy. This is what I've had to learn over the last 35 years of my life. So, and it's really fairly easy to keep this part of my body functioning and feeling really good as long as I follow the proper lifestyle choices in the top part of the totem pole. That is the big key. Okay, so those are all of our slave joints and muscles, the thoracic spine, feet, shoulders, I kind of put them more in order here the, of importance to me, the hands, and then the hips and the knees and the elbows are the lowest part on the totem pole in my totem pole aspect. All right, so quick recap. So at the very top of the totem pole, we have the bird representing our psyche, our mindset, our spirit, our values, our goals, our dreams, highly, highly important. Down below that, we have life balance with the sun and the moon and hot, cold, male, female, anabolic, catabolic, all that kind of good stuff. Down below that, we have breath with our wonderful skull in here with the exhaling out of the nose, breathing through our nose, super, super important. Down below that, we have our skull with the fish hanging out of the mouth because it's mastication and nutrition and putting all of the proper things into our body so that the rest of our body can function properly. Down below that, we have the eyes, the vestibular system, and the hearing so that we have vision and balance and learning capabilities and, um, and the ability to stay on balance to see danger, to get away from danger, all of those good things. Then down below that, we have our, or um, sorry, our cervical, upper cervical spine. So with the atlas and keeping that all stationary and our skull balanced. Below that, we have all of our viscera, our organs, and um, and our glands, so keeping our heart and liver and intestines and everything else super duper healthy. And then below that, we have our emotions and making sure that we are managing our emotions and taking care of those, as well as any other things that cause great emotions, like, you know, the broken heart and the gut feelings and the pains in the butts in our life and stuff like that.
And then down below that, we have our pelvis and our lumbar spine. And, um, and so that's kind of the biggest, most important part of our physical body getting down here, because then down below that, we get into all the slave joints once again. Okay, so all these slave joints. So when you have problems down here, when you come to me, it's great. You can tell me about all the pains that are down here and we will start to address those. But I'm going to be asking you questions and having you fill out paperwork about everything up here at the top. Because if we're not addressing the things up here at the top, our chances of resolving problems down here are going to be much harder and they'll just go right back out of place again, which is a lot of times where people will go, oh yeah, well, I went to the chiropractor and he put everything back into the right spot. But, you know, two days later, it felt like it was all out again. And it's like going, right, well, because why is it out of place? So is it out of place because you got organs that are unhappy? Is it out of place because, you know, you're not putting proper nutrition in and your body can't balance things properly or what's the deal? So something's going on. So that is my talk about the totem pole. Please, if you really like this, like it, subscribe to my channel, all that kind of fun stuff. Check out my holistic lifestyle mastery program. As long as it's available, I pretty much only offer people to join in the beginning of the year. And um, I look forward to seeing you on other videos. If you've got questions, go to finfit.com. You can always shoot me emails at michael at finfit.com and ask questions and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope you all have a wonderful, happy and healthy day. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.